Afternoon, everyone. Hola, Barcelona. Well, uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, first, before starting, let me introduce myself. My name is Aisha Lafia. I am from Morocco, a Java software engineering at AdServe with a love for coding, a heart for volunteering, and of course, a taste for delicious food. I'm also part of many local and international communities, such as a Women Tech Makers Ambassador and a member of the Moroccan Association of the Computing Science. And we are here to discuss a crucial aspect of our field, sustainability in software development. As technology evolves, our environmental responsibility grows. And today we will explore why sustainability matters and how we as the Java developers can really make a significant impact. Well, let's start with some key reasons or statistics why we should care or why sustainability is important. Did you know that our tech industry consumes almost 7% of the global electricity? Data centers itself contribute to, unfortunately, to 2% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. As a developers, our development choices can really impact those numbers. And if you are still thinking 2% is a small amount, here is another one fact. Energy consumed by data centers worldwide is more than the energy consumption of the entire airline industry. As I imagine if we could reduce that number by just going for some green, smarter development choices. And right now, what's the first thing you think about or come in your mind when you hear green programming? Anyone? What do you think about when you hear green programming? Quarkus? Okay. Yes, less energy. Others? Well, green programming involves developing software with the focus on two things, like developing software that efficiently, like focusing on the energy efficiency and sustainability. It's more like writing code that uses less energy, optimizing our application to run more efficiently, and of course, the most important thing is considering the environmental impact of our softwares. And the one million question is why we as the Java developers in specific, or Java developers in general, should care. Well, we can see Java is everywhere. We are just like the pop stars of the programming languages. And that gives us a real chance to make a, like, a big impact. And by going green, we can not only like, help the environment, but also influence other communities to follow this practice. And right now, let's start the fun part. Let's explore some strategies for green Java development that can help reducing energy consumption, lowering the environmental impacts of our application, and of course, optimizing the resource usage. And since we are talking about Java, we need to start with GVM. Like, let's talk about the GVM optimization techniques, where tuning garbage collection can significantly reduce pauses time and enhance application performance. Efficient use of just-in-time compilation can enhance execution speed. And of course, monitoring and profiling the GVM can really help addressing the endpoint pointing the bottleneck in your application. Let's start or let's look more about tuning garbage collection. Tuning garbage collection is more about adjusting the startup's parameters of your GVM-based applications. And this is why choosing the right algorithms is really crucial. Like for instance, you can use the G1 garbage collection that designed for application with large memory heaps and that can reduce process time. There's also the ZGC, which is another low latency garbage collection. And my favorite one, we see Shenandoah. Why? Because it works like it work, it, uh, it performs mo most of its work concurrently with the running application. And it doesn't matter about, like, it doesn't care about your heap size, whatever it's two, two gigabytes or 200 gigabytes, it's always ensuring consistently low pause this time. Also, you can optimize your garbage collection parameters, such as the heap size, duration size, can also help to reduce pause this time which can be lead to, like, uh, how we say, we can get more performance of your application. Next two is just-in-time compilation, which optimizes code execution at runtime by compiling 
white coat to native coat. And this is where profiling can really help identifying the hotspots of your application that benefits from just-in-time compilation. And also, you can, you can use techniques such as inlining, which is replacing like uh, function calls by their bodies. Also, there is escape, escape analyze, where you need to please eliminate all the unnecessary object allocation can help to further enhance the performance of your application. And now, are you ready to uncover all these hidden inefficiencies in your Java application? Yeah? Well, let's start analyzing resource usage. Let's first talk about monitoring and profiling Java performance. This is all about the tool that you want to use. So you cannot just go check in all that logs by yourself. There is tools such as Gconsole, Visual VM, and Java Mission Controller to monitor and profile application on your behalf. For example, Visual VM is great with its tree and hip dumps, plus with some really cool graphs. Next thing to do is identifying resource intense operations. It's like being Sherlock Holmes of your CPU in memory usage, where you need to point point operations that consume many executive CPU, memory, or other resources, so you can really like get to know how you can enhance your performance and optimize especially the resource that you are using. And of course, finally, you need to check the resource, analyze where we turn to GProfiler, UKIT, Eclipse MIT, and any tool you can use so that, so that you can really get to know the depth resource analyze. It's all, for example, the GProfiler give you a real time into CPU and memory making up, you can say a behavior analyze, almost fun. Because we know that as a developer, we really like find this kind of activities boring, especially when you are trying to check every time, monitor like what's happening in your application. But you really get to know like what's going on. This is the question. You're not just running application randomly just to see if it's working, but you need to check like the usage to monitor the energy usage, the energy consumption, so it can be more efficient. And with these tools, you can ensure that your application run like a smooth operator, all having some fun. And once you, once you identify like the resource heavy parts of your application, it's, hello, sorry. Test this. Let me just check. Okay, do you hear me right now? A little bit? Okay, I'll just wait. Test, test. Hello? Yeah, it does work a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. There is a technical issue, but uh, do you hear me right now? No, okay. Let's just, since I will pause my, like, say my talk for a little bit, and let's do some fun since they work. Anyone of you have heard of sustainability in development? Raise their hand. Anyone ever use some tools to help get their application more greener or more sustainable? Raise your hand. Oh, that's good. Anyone ever know like the energy usage that your application really consume? Raise your hand. Oh, well, that's bad because you have to know that our application are not only just for the clients, but they are only they are costs that we need to pay attention to it. Like it's more about not only like considering uh, the cost of energy, but also I think, yeah, the mic is working right now. So please consider the sustainable impacts of your application and also check the CPU statistics of your apps too. And right now, let's go back to reducing energy consumption. So as I said, once you identify the resource heavy parts of your application, we can start implement strategies to like really reducing energy consumption. That include efficient memory management, minimizing input-output operation, and reducing idle time and power usage. For efficient memory management, this is, let's see, let's show the code that can really explain more. This is more about like 
for example, avoid unnecessary object creation, such as using linked lists, but you can use array lists for random access, use string builder for efficient con concatenation strings, and also like uh, current hash map for a tree safe operation. It's more about the efficient use by going through some clean techniques. And also, I need to mention that going for a clean code can, be, can lead to a green code. Second thing is minimizing input-output operation. This is where we use buffers, IO stream, for example, an asynchronized IO operation to reduce the block and the waiting time. And finally, there is reducing the idle time and power usage. This is where we implement techniques such as treat pooling to manage access to resource efficiently, especially when we are talking about treats. Many people that get really confused what resources are used on each treat. And this is my favorite part that we are almost, you can say, familiar with it, which is another crucial aspect of GUI programming that is selecting of the efficient algorithms. The algorithms we choose can have a huge impact on the energy consumption of our application. For example, using algorithms with a lower computational complexity can save a significant execution or processing time and energy. For a more specific example, there is quick sort versus bubble sort. Who's the, who do you think the greener or the winner? Which one do you think we can use? Quick sort versus, yeah, indeed. Quick sort is more suitable for sorting large sets. Hash map versus tree map. Who's the winner? Who's the greener? Yeah. Hash map is more accessible than the tree map. And also, we need, it's important to balance between performance and accessibility to avoid like, all that unnecessary resource expenditure. And of course, we cannot forget or cannot talk about cloud. Like preferring cloud-based solution can also contribute to green programming because cloud providers often operate energy-efficient data centers and offer a scalable resource that can be managed more efficiently than the traditional on-site setups. That can also, like, it's always to match the demands of the clients, which can lead to reducing waste and energy. And that's, we can say, the heart of the green programming. It's all about energy saving of your application. Here is an example. For, there is AWS Lambda, which is a serverless computing, allows you to run code without provision and managing server, which also can lead to more energy efficiency. And of course, the famous one, there is Google Cloud Functions, that's another serverless option that can help reduce energy consumption. And there is also Microsoft serverless compute service that's called Azure Function, which also can help offer scalability and efficient resource management. Last and not least for our last green strategy is measuring and monitoring tools. Like after all the efforts that we did about choosing the right garbage collector, checking for reducing energy consumption, optimizing our resource usage, we need to measure this Im the impacts of those efforts. And what's better than tools for tracking energy consumption and performance? And now I'm not talking about this one, but more of these tools. Like Green Software Foundation Carbon Aware SDK, which is a tool that can help software developer create a carbon aware application. For example, the carbon footprint logs and more. And of course, there is Dynetrace that provides an AI powered monitoring tool that can for application performance and resource usage. And the good thing that they have a boot here, so you can go to them to check their platform. And that's really amazing because I talked to him yesterday and he gave me some really good updates. And finally, there is Primethos and Grafana, the famous one, that are open source monitor solution that can be used to track application metrics and visualize data. And right now, let's talk about some real example of green, of jo green Java development implementation. Like these studies showcase successful implementation of green programming techniques and their measurable impacts of lowering the environmental impact. Our first study is green tech software solution. 
Like this company specialized in developing energy efficient softwares for monitoring, for environmental monitoring. They implement various green programming, such as optimizing algorithms for minimal computational complexity and always preferring cloud based solutions than the on site one. And that, as a result, they achieved like 40% of reduction in energy consumption and significantly decreased their carbon, carbon footprint. Here is a fun fact. Green Tech software saved enough energy to power 200 homes for a year. Life, let's, so let's save some energy. And this illustrates the significant impact that green programming can have on energy conservation. Our second and last example is Monzo Bank, which is an innovative online bank that has adopted green programming practices from the start, which enhances sustainability and digital banking. By optimizing their Java microservices, Monzo have like, significantly improved their applications and the, perform the performance of their softwares. They also prefer the cloud infrastructure, the serverless service, and, uh, for example, they choose some practices like Kubernetes for efficient container orchestrations. And as a result, they, like, they lead to 35% of energy reduction. And they had to engage like 500,000 customers to the sustainability culture, like by going for awareness, awareness campaign for their customer as a mail-in, they also, in their application, it's more green. And by this, they are not only adapting green programming as a development practices, but also as a lifestyle. And from all these case studies, we can identify several common techniques that contribute to their success. First thing, there is optimizing service usage, selecting efficient algorithm, and of course, it's always preferring the renewable energy resource that's offered by the cloud. And along with this, there is always like the dilemma of the sustainability is balancing performance with sustainability and overcoming technical handles. Because being green, it's not something that's simple or it's not something that can be easily, it's, it's easily like being done. You have to look for, for algorithms that can be Lower computational, we have to look for the uh, tools that are not really in a big, I would say, it's not really that diverse. So, are, so are going always to suck with a couple tools. So, right now, all I have to ask you is you need to take action. Like, be aware that our softwares are not only created to match a market demand, but also it has an impact on the environmental. To recap, we've covered the importance of sustainability in software development. We talked about the principle of green programming, strategies to implement, and the tools that we can use. And here is a powerful fun fact. If every Java developer optimized their code for energy efficiency, we could reduce the global energy consumption by equivalent of removing one million cars from the road. And that illustrates really significant impacts of our development choices. And of course, it's time to call for action. Start with the small changes in your, in your project. Start with refactoring, and not only this time for a clean code, but for a green code. And remember, do it incrementally. Like, remember, please, baby steps is better than zero steps. Also, educate your team and stakeholders. Always raise awareness about the environmental impacts of your softwares. And also, you can match that you are the, the cost saving for your stakeholders. It works too. And finally, try to implement best practices and continuous monitoring to check the effects of your changes, if it's really working, if it's not, you can put some, something to change. And thank you all for attending my talk. So let's make our code cleaner and the planet greener. Do you have any question? <laughs> any question? Anyone? Yeah, there is one. Uh, 
Hello. Uh, thank you for your talk. Maybe more a comment than a question. Um, I think there's also a lot of leverage than how you're operating, how you're running the software. For instance, switching your electricity provider to some green electricity or pushing the cloud providers to do or to work with renewable energy. That can be something that you don't even need to change the code and you can make a lot of impact, I think. Also, it will affect cost, but just wanted to say. Indeed, but uh, as, uh, as a developers, if we can make some changes, even the small one, can really have a big impact. Because especially when we're talking about changes, talking to the cloud servers, the providers, it's really a lot of processing, like how to convince them, how to get a really, uh, some, how get them to use a renewable energy resource. That's a hard task for us as a developers. So what I'm trying to do is how to help with the small steps. If we can save a little bit of energy, it's way much better than no energy. Thank you. Another question? Don't be shy. Actually, to addition, uh, why I choose this top topic, because there is a statistic saying that data centers right now, on 2024, is consumed 3% of the global, like, the, the, it's cons yeah, it's consumed 3% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. And by 2023, it will consume almost 13%. And that's a big number. And that's why I start to look for more of green programming and what's a better way than give awareness by doing a talk. So thank you all for joining me today. And I hope that you can start implementing these tools. And see you in another event. Thank you. Thank you.